Alrighty, hello every folks, and good morning. So, how many of y'all have been in this situation? You excitedly picked up a Steam Deck, and uh, were really excited to go try out some XCOM 2 on it. You've got the Workshop support, you've got the, uh, the Nexus mods and stuff like that. You're all ready to go, and... Wait a minute. Why, why do my buttons do all kinds of strange things? Why is it then that when I look at the Steam page, it says controllers are not supported? What the hell is this? They literally had a video talking about how you can go through the Avenger in first person using a controller, that you can use a gamepad separately. What games? <laughs> Why is this a situation? Um, and additionally, you might have potentially gone over to the, uh, the options here and realized, wait a minute, I can go to these options, I can go to my input device, but my only option is mouse, despite the fact that I'm using the face buttons to navigate this menu. Who designed this? Okay, well, fair enough. You know what, there's a lot of questions to answer here, but let me explain what's going on. Basically, when it comes to the Steam Deck, it is constantly switching between your mouse and keyboard and your gamepad. It doesn't have both activated at the same time, even when you tell it to switch modes. Um, surprisingly enough, literally, despite the fact that you have that game mode switching option, it doesn't do anything in this situation. So here's how you get it done. Uh, so, first thing uh, what you want to do is if you have the game up, um, I'm just going to have it up in the background here, but uh, if you have it up, go ahead and close it. Uh, what you want to do is go down here to this gamepad button and uh, go over to your templates. Now, go over to the community templates, uh, and you're going to see one, or, I mean, you can do community layouts or just the standard templates. Um, gamepad with uh, mouse trackpad is the one that I used, but realistically, you can use any that are gamepad plus something. You aren't actually going to be using the uh, controls aside from the gamepad. So what we're doing here is you go select uh, your template. You uh, click Apply Layout. Again, just gamepad plus something else. Uh, because your touchscreen will always remain active. And at this point, you go ahead and you launch the game. Um, and it will essentially have even funkier controls than it did before. Um, as to who decided that uh, switching between all kinds of different modes, depending on your different situations in the game, is somehow a convenient solution, I don't know. The console controls work great, <laughs> so it's baffling to me, for example, that Enemy Unknown doesn't use the Vita or PS3 controls, um, because, frankly, those work fantastically, uh, or, you know, the fact that this one doesn't use this gamepad by default. Anyway, I'm going to minimize this real quick to show you what you need to do next. So you're going to need to use your touchscreen, but here's the thing. It uses the ultra-basic version of the touchscreen. So, like, normally, when you're using the touchscreen, touching it will click it. Um, you click on a location, and it'll go there. It'll just snap immediately to where you, t you tap your finger, right? In this particular case, it's using, like, the old tablet version, basically. So you drag over to something, and then you tap to click it. Um, the reason that, that this is important is that, yeah, if you try to tap on the section of the screen that you're trying to go, it won't do anything. It'll just keep clicking on wherever the mouse is at any given time. All you do is simply go down here to the options, that's right here in the middle of the menu. Uh, you go down to uh, interface, and then you go down to input device, and then you switch this over to controller, at which point your mouse and keyboard will be disabled, but every time you launch it up in either handheld mode or desktop mode, if you're doing recordings or something like that, um, it, will be, uh, it will be good and functional with the console controls. Uh, one thing to actually mention here uh, is that uh, there are still a few quirks, as you'd kind of expect. Uh, essentially, this game is definitely not known for being bug-free. Um, but, for example, if you were to go into some of your sub-menus, uh, just like the Switch version, if you go into the color selection, you'll start noticing that, hey, look, you're suddenly jumping between all kinds of different selections. Uh, just exit out and go back in, and it'll be back to normal. It's just... It's just a thing that happens. I don't really know why. I'm assuming it's because it's too many submenus. Um, yeah, it, I mean, frankly, if you're an XCOM 2 fan, you're used to seeing some of the most bizarre glitches ever and just kind of rolling with them. So, <laughs> you know, do with that as you will. Uh, additionally, if you were, for example, interested in, uh, let's say, making a custom character or something like that, uh, you wanted to adjust the names. Uh, so uh, let's say uh, uh, we wanted to go ahead and make a... Uh, say, make a, an Ashley Riot here from uh, uh, from Vagrant Story. Uh, essentially, your keyboard would still work, so you're, it's just your mouse controls that are going to be elsewhere, so don't have to worry about uh, your mouse controls. Interestingly enough, uh, your trackpad will still work in the background, just not in the game, so it'll always end up uh, kind of sticking up top there. Um, anyways, so that's kind of about that then, uh, so y'all have yourselves a good one. I hope this was helpful, and uh, yeah, I will see you in the next one. Take care.